Um, so any questions from the audience? I haven't seen a whole lot of um, um, chats here, but I would encourage you uh, to, uh, to uh, ask questions if you have them. I know we're a little bit over on, uh, on time here. Is there anything the panel would like to add before we close? Uh, anything we didn't cover? Anything you think would help your colleagues adopt or some problem that you encountered, you know, when you were trying to adopt these techniques at first that you were surprised by that we could mention? Just one real quick comment I had about your, the racking uh, hitch suture, which is, is basically you put the tunnel and then you use the shuttle suture as your repair suture. So um, that that's super easy and that might be an, a really easy way to start with some partial, I love doing that for those partial split, the really small partial split subscap tears. Um, I'll just literally repair it with one simple stitch, the repair stitch. So it makes it even easier. You don't have to shuttle sutures. Um, and uh, and yeah, that, that racking, uh, probably need to make like an animation of how to tie that stitch for people who don't know. It's like, it's the awesomest stitch, the easiest stitch in the world. I mean, you can use it for all sorts of things, like even, you know, comminuted clavicle fracture pieces, like putting those together, like all, all sorts of things, uses of that. So anyway, just, just that comment. Yeah, and there's also a little trick for speed that was written up, uh, I believe in JSES by Buess, B-U-E-S-S at -S all, back in like 2018, 2019, uh, of passing the doubled uh, passing stitch, just take your integrated passer, pass that through the cuff, and then pull three sutures through the cuff and bone simultaneously, so it eliminates all your passing steps, right? And then you could do that twice and you have six sutures passed through the cuff so then you can weave you can you can weave those into a transosseous xbox like you normally would and it saves a ton of steps and this is i think dr brodigan was alluding to this earlier a lot of people who, who think that transosseous is going to be a lot more time inefficient either haven't done it or haven't thought it through in that you're saving steps by passing simple sutures instead of mattress sutures and then you know think about the transosseous equivalent repairs where people say well, it's knotless because I put in a knotless anchor as the last step. And it's like, but you tied the medial knots and they were mattress passes, right? So they're like, like you did tie knots and you did multiple mattress passes. Whereas with the transosseous repair, you're passing simples. And then if you just tie those, you're tying the same amount of suture as you would with the transosseous equivalent, but you're done, you know, and you tie your knots low and lateral. So Uma had brought that up laterally or uh, before I, I, I use my post uh, laterally to keep the knots off the top of the cuff. Not that it really matters, but just as a style point or as a cosmetic point, I just like to keep them low so it's nice and smooth and it looks just like a transosseous equivalent knotless type repair. So again, there's such a plurality of techniques here that it's almost like a Pandora's box and once of, of new things to do. And once you get into it, it is, it is so fun to, uh, be able to differentiate these new techniques and, and uh, optimize for whatever you feel like optimizing for at the time, whether it's cost or time or fixation points, you know, given the case, you can, you can, you can do it all with unlimited fixation points. So uh, that, that was, that was one of the things that was a pleasant surprise to me uh, uh, in addition to the pain, pain relief that we've all been talking about. So that's one thing I wanted to add to your, your hybrid technique is that, I mean, if there's a dog ear, if there's part of the cup that you feel like you didn't capture with your tunnels, you can throw an extra suture in and incorporate that into that far lateral tunnel with those other, you know, knots, um, that, you know, for help with compression. So I think it, it really gives you that added, you know, security blanket, uh, for more fixation points. I mean, not just using the suture you've already passed, but additional suture if you need to, um, you know, once you're done tying things down, maybe the cuff didn't come exactly how you wanted it to sit. Maybe there's a, a, a flap, you know, posterior that you want to capture. Um, I just think it's just, it is, it gives you some more versatility with the repair. Have you ever, has anyone ever tunneled straight through the cuff, just through a poke hole with a, with a blade? Yeah, and I prefer actually for the, uh, the pasta type repair, you know, an articular sided repair. I actually like placing anchors and tunnels from the joint, you know, viewing from inside the joint uh, posteriorly, you can really see your articular margin. 
uh, and you can just kind of poke it through and you know pass your one tunnel and then the suture one of your sutures already there you can pass the other ones and then just go to the subacromial space and tie and you, you're not at risk for over restraining like a articular sided tear by the suture passage so that's that's always nice I would actually suggest starting with a bigger tear. It's easier to see everything in the tuberosity uh, you know, with a much larger tear. It's actually a little bit more difficult if you have one of those little crescent tears that you're trying to look inside and outside with, and if you're a little uncomfortable with it at first, uh, just start with a bigger tear. You can see the whole tuberosity and you know work your way down to the smaller tears. Yeah, I agree. And, it's, and even if you've never done it before, uh, uh, on a big tear, you know, a two nine hole in the bone does nothing to prevent, an, you know, the placement of an anchor. And even if you can't, you, let's say you can't get the, let's say the portal's off and you can't get the tunnel in, or let's say the bone is off and you don't like it, or let's say you accidentally unload the suture, what happens? Nothing. You can just put another tunnel in the exact same tunnel or you can put an anchor in the exact same tunnel and the diameter mismatch makes the anchor even work better, you know? So that's one of the things about early adoption is the, the ramifications to unloading a tunnel are far less than unloading a suture anchor where you put a suture anchor in. If you unload that, you've burned your fixation point, right? Like geometrically, you've just destroyed that surface area that you're trying to fix to and you can no longer use it, or, you know? Whereas if, if you unload a tunnel, you just tunnel through it again or put an anchor in it or, or whatever, or use an existing suture to just pull three more sutures in. There's just so many different ways you can bail yourself out of problems. It's actually way easier and less detrimental when you have failure modes with tunnels. Um, yeah, I agree. I mean, it's, it hasn't, it's not super challenging to um, train folks. You know, we have a fellowship program of residents and, it's, it's stuff that is well within range to to learn at that stage. It's just a matter of your philosophical thinking about it, your paradigm about it. But I mean, we do start with uh, anchors and showing them a double row. And then a tunnel is essentially that, you know, you have your medial vertical, you know, row and you have your lateral row. It's just a little bit more suture management, but easily achieved, you know, like you mentioned with some of your techniques or just pick some different colors and, you know, it's not hard to keep track of. Yeah, that totally. is important, you know, using different colored sutures, absolutely. That's probably another thing that can be mentioned is uh, when you're first doing it, don't, don't put any, put three different stitches in your tunnel or, you know, whatever, put different stitches. That was one of the questions on the Q&A, like what sutures do you use? I, mean, I responded to it, I mix it up just with it, whatever gives me a different color is fine at the bond, people can use fiber wire. I prefer softer suture, you know, like number twos are actually, you mostly use tapes, like a one four tape I think is perfect, used up to like a 2.3 millimeter tape uh, as well. And one other final uh, technical tip, you can get your same sutures through all four of your tunnels, you know, or you know, if you have two full tunnels, you can take sutures and run through all four and bring them up and just do one anchor. And that's a true knotless transosseous uh, type fixation without tying anything. So if people are, you know, interested in not having to tie any knots, but use tunnels and one anchor, you could do it that way too. Like a U with a mattress across the bone. Yeah, anteriorly it goes down into your vertical yeah. tunnel. It comes across out and that same suture comes back around your greater tuberosity and in through your posterior tunnel and back up. So if you pass them into your cuff, now you just lay them down and you're done, you know, uh, in, a, yeah. in your anchor, if you don't want to tie. I still like to tie. And that's going against the grain perpendicularly and that rarely cuts out that way. Yeah, it can't, I mean, you'd have to cut throughout massive amount of bone, you know. Yeah, like two centimeters of bone, exactly. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I've almost never seen that. And uh, I think there's a difference in the anisotropic properties of bone where it just, you know, the loading behavior is different depending on the direction. So when you're going perpendicular to the grain like that, it just doesn't cut, cut through nearly as e easily. Uh, it has to be like super soft. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a great point. Um, well, that's, that's great. Uh, I think we've, we've yeah. um, about reached the, the uh, limit of uh, attention span here. We've covered tons of interesting things. I think we've still got things to cover in future webinars. Uh, we'll, we'll cover some allografting techniques and some uh, advanced techniques maybe in the future. 
I really appreciate the attendees and the panelists uh, tonight. It's been really fun and 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 spontaneous, and and uh, love the interaction of the, the small family of transosseous docs. Um, and uh, look forward to to uh, getting together with you guys in the future. So unless there's any anything else anyone wants to to uh, contribute, I'll go ahead and conclude with that. Yeah, thank you. Much enjoyed it. All right, everybody, thanks so much for attending. We'll record this and, and send it out afterwards. Have a good night. You too, thanks. Well, y'all have a good night.